Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is episode number 36. My name is Keith. This is my good friend, Doug. Doug, how does 36 find you? Doing good. Yeah. Our uh, topics today are great. Uh, we're going to get a little spooky. Wear a little my sp- spooky shirt for those watching. Oh, so, I like that. Uh, He's wearing Ghostbusters for those listeners. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. It's uh, a time of year where it's fall when we're recording this and it's Halloweenish time. So we decided to kind of go with the theme, you know, lean into the month a little bit. So it'll be fun. But before we get spooky, we are going to queue up the nerd news. Nerd news. And Doug, I'm going to go ahead and get my share going here and we will kind of dive right on here. So number one, let you take it. All right. Uh, The RoboCop game. You know, they've done a couple of RoboCop games in the past, but uh, the way this looks uh, technology wise, you know, it uh, looks really, really good so far. Yeah. The prior ones were side scrollers like uh, the arcade, if I remember correctly. And they were all right. Just side scrolling shooting. Uh, this is cool because it actually <laughs> in the screens, if you're listening, we, we have a share up of it, but it shows there's actual, uh, it looks like conversation decision trees in it. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if there's yeah. like an element to it. That's like our role playing, even though it's a shooter. It, it might be. Yeah. Uh, it's got some uh, dialogue options. Uh, good with, uh, you know, Starfield came out, uh, all these Skyrim and other kind of choose your adventure. You get to make the decision. So that's good. It's not a, on rails as the uh, term goes you're not stuck making just one decision all the time yeah and it it points out on here it's interesting it says that a robocop can interrogate citizens uh, pushing them authoritatively to reveal more information or lightly threaten them with punitive measures if they don't cooperate npcs non-player characters for those non-gamers can become friend or foe depending on how your interactions go I don't know, man. I, it's cool because it's RoboCop, but hearing these positive early review things that like early things, mm-hmm. it kind of gets me excited for it. It looks really good. Yeah. Well, you hate to do a snapshot judgment until you get to put your hands on it, but seeing positive reviews early, as long as there's no bugs or other issues, I think that's a good sign. Yeah. I saw a video where they put the original movie intro where it shows the city skyline and it pans down onto the police station shows like boom, boom, shot for shot. They recreated that in game, almost identical. And so that's kind of neat. Look, looks good. Yeah. Yeah. So they're trying to keep it uh, very much um, in the same vein as the original movie, which is cool. I like that they're doing that. That's, that's neat. Yeah. All right. Next one on the list. Now this is also a video game, but it's one of those that uh, a lot of people are very excited about. Now it's PlayStation exclusive. It's Spider-Man 2. Uh, what's cool about this is, so if you don't know, there was the Spider-Man game, uh, which had Peter Parker, and then it had a, what I would call more of a 1.5. It was kind of an add-on, but it was standalone. It was called Miles Morales, which was based off of Into the Spider-Verse movies, if you were able to see those, uh, and they were together. Well, now Spider-Man 2, they're together again, but it brings in tons of other characters. We're talking Venom. You actually get to play as Venom. Uh, which is awesome. pretty awesome. They got Sandman yeah. in it. Uh, it still takes place in New York City. The first game was just so amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, it's so good. You can play this on PC. Uh, I don't know about Spider-Man 2, this one, yet, but it probably will trail a little bit. Uh, it'll be exclusive on the PlayStation probably about a month. Um, then they'll probably release it on Steam, which is really cool that Sony does that. Uh, so this game is just getting blown up in way of reviews, getting all kinds of... But, you know. The first one was so good. Miles Morales was so good. I play through all of them, beat all of them. Absolutely love them. I will definitely yeah. pick this bad boy up. Are you, have you played any of these yet on your PC? I have not. Uh, we oh, watched so this uh, trailer, if you remember, uh, one or two podcasts ago. Mm-hmm. I thought the graphics were amazing. Oh, they're gorgeous. Uh, it kind of shows them zipping along mm-hmm. uh, the water, chasing a boat. Yep. Uh, I didn't get to play the first one. I may have to definitely check this out. Dude. I'm uh, really excited about it. And like I said, the graphics look amazing. Oh, they're so good. I highly recommend it because yeah. it isn't just that it looks good, but also the gameplay. Like it's so smooth the way you do the combat. Did you ever play any of the Batman series, the Arkham's? No, oh the God. Arkham Knight. Yes. That, yeah. I had a lot of people say, you got to yeah. check this out, but I just. That one's another man. It. You got some catching up to do. You got some gaming you need to do. I know. I didn't steer you wrong on Skyrim. 
So I'm not no, going to steer you wrong on this. Yeah. <laughs> so this is also amazing, I promise. So you definitely have to pick it up. Yeah. It, it's similar to the Batman Arkham series in that when you get into a group of people to combat, like you block and then you attack. It's very easy. Mm-hmm. It's not like a button masher. It's really so easy to do combos. So the fighting system is just very enjoyable, along with the graphics are awesome. So definitely, yeah, you, highly recommend it. You, yeah. You bring that up. I thought the first, uh, like in my opinion, multi-suspect uh, or multi-villain uh, fighting mm-hmm. system was Assassin's Creed. Uh, it seemed to like me that. so yeah. so easy to be able to attack multiple enemies with ease and doing combos and blocks and stuff. It's comparable to Assassin's Creed. I'm glad you brought that up. It's actually very, very comparable. So, yeah, that's a good one. I don't know if you read this one, but I'm going to let you take it if you. Yeah, Apple uh, Pencil decides to uh, confuse iPad a little bit. <laughs> uh, looks <laughs> yep. like the new 10th gen iPad owners uh, can grab a, a, a uh, Apple Pencil. I'm not familiar with that. I know it's like a stylus, and uh, I have to. I have to laugh, you know, because I have talked on this podcast about going back and watching Steve Jobs' first iPhone introduction. Mm-hmm. And the big thing he says is, stylus? Why do we need a stylus? Yeah. We got 10 styluses right here. So Yeah, I know. They're kind of, uh, mm, I don't know, they're falling back on the OG, with what Steve said, uh, because yeah. when the iPad did come out, it didn't need one. But they found out that there is value in them. So mm-hmm. uh, essentially, there are three. This is a budget. Uh, iPad pencil is what it is, and it has USB charging, which I get it. Um, I have the fancier one, which is this guy right here. Basically, it's wireless yeah. charging, which is really nice. Um, there is a cool little chart. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but basically it shows you there's the second gen. That's the one I just held up, and it has all the check marks. And then you have the new one, which is a budget one. It doesn't have near as many. Uh, and then it has the first OG one, uh, which is the the, the least amount of features big thing is pressure sensitivity that's really kind of nice um tilt sensitivity and all of that um and then of course you can double tap on this one in order to do certain things you won't be able to do that but you know kudos to apple for at least they're trying to do a a budget option you know which Mm -hmm. is good i think for students and i think that's the point but it does it's kind of confusing as to why they're doing that because you're right they went from uh we don't need any uh styluses to now they have three available but that was one of their major announcements on there so well, and I think I could be wrong. You know, I'm not a tech expert, but I think the return of the stylus or the pen really started with Samsung. They did such a great job with their S Pen and their Note line series, and now it's in the Ultra series. Uh, I know I've had some Samsungs in the past, and that uh, S Pen, you can copy and paste, and you can even, on some of them, kind of hold it back and take a selfie and take a picture with it. Oh, that's cool. So I'm I didn't know you could do that sure with it. Hmm. Uh, you have a pen, not to interrupt you there. No, no. Uh, does it kind of do the same thing, like no. copy and paste and does some cool uh, stuff like that? It can. It's got like uh, taps on it so that you can do shortcutting and you can do some customizing. You can't take a photo mm-hmm. with it, as far as I know. That's kind of new. So that's kind of cool. Hmm. I believe, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but that was maybe the uh, 10, a uh, Note 10, uh, somewhere along that. Not the one that exploded and caught on fire. Sorry, yeah. people's vehicles. but yeah. <laughs> The Note was a big big phone man yeah so yeah i think that's where they had that so they could do cool stuff like that cool. uh the next one is interesting um it's about tesla now this kind of veers into the ai thing because we can't have an you know a wired nerdy nerd news without an ai but uh basically uh tesla has announced that there will be a vehicle update that will check for driver grogginess the new feature is called driver drowsiness warning is rolling out in cars in Europe first that alerts drivers if they appear tired it checks for facial cues while driving um driving patterns that may be erratic now i can't say you know this is new now this one's integrated into their autopilot where it drives itself uh i mean ford and chevy they've have in toyota and honda they've had stuff where if you kind of veer lanes it tells you it's sleepy i don't know your fancy honda might do that doesn't it yeah, it has uh, lane assist. I think that's yeah, the official name. That's what it is. Yep. So it really relies on, I believe, nicely painted lines. Because I've been on some rural roads mm-hmm. where the lines are kind of faded or there's no lines at all. It doesn't work. Hmm. So I hadn't thought of that. there's some kind of camera system or something that's looking for those nice painted lines and it keeps you in the lines. 
Hmm. Now, it will yell at me if I take my hands off the wheel or I don't kind of give it a little shake. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you're kind of a one-handed driver and you just stay there and don't move, it's like, hey, are you still holding the wheel? So it Hmm. gives you an alert. Oh, very cool. None of my none of cars have that. I have like the, oh, the assist for if there's a blind spot, person in your blind spot, mm-hmm. I have yep. that, but I don't, I don't have any of the dry, drowsy stuff. So that's kind of cool. So, all right. Next one. Very, I will take this one. Do, I'll take this one if you don't mind. And I, I'll have you uh, yeah, absolutely. hit up these last two because they're kind okay. of, you know. So with this one, it, this is very interesting. There's a company called Analog. Uh, now they've made like kind of remake systems before. Um, and with this, they made an announcement that they're going to redo the Nintendo 64 so that it'll be 4k. Now there's not a lot of details on this. Um, and this company has done this, uh, you know, before with, um, other consoles. Uh, what's really neat is that you can use original cartridges with it. So I don't know. It's, this is kind of cool in an age where we were talking about, you know, uh, you know, I think it was last episode, Best Buy, uh, reducing DVDs and Blu-rays and now, mm-hmm. you know, Walmart yeah. and some others potentially stepping back on physical media. When it comes to video games, it's kind of cool that they're re-releasing systems like this and you can play it on your 4K K TVs. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of neat. Uh, we'll see. There's not a lot of details. Don't know when it's going to come out. Uh, it's just an announcement that they made. Um, you know, it's, so people are really excited about this. Um, you know, they've done NES's, Super Nintendo's, so Nintendo's, Super Nintendo's, and Sega Genesis. Um, and they also have the sleek analog pocket, which we've talked about, which basically lets you run Game Boy games. Uh, so they're known for basically re-releasing old consoles, um, but in new forms. So, and it can play original media. Yeah, I think this is very exciting. You know, my core memories as a child are PlayStation 1, but before that, N64 and Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo, I've said before, is one of my most favorite systems. It just Same. so many awesome titles and stuff. Uh, the thing I think, uh, this is a little different, but the thing people have always wanted, you know, those mini consoles. They came out with the NES Mini, Super NES Mini. Sega did one as well. People mm-hmm. have been waiting and waiting to get an N64 Mini. So this might... Speed up Nintendo a little, uh, Nintendo a little bit. I don't know. It might. Then you know, I there were rumors, and I I saw a YouTube video where there's even a Dreamcast Mini. Oh, that, that would kind, be amazing. Yeah, yeah, that kind of got hung up. I don't know if it was an official one or not. I know a lot of people want it, but those mini consoles are. You're right. They're like wildly popular. So definitely a huge market for it. And I think it's cool that Analog's doing this now. Again, the Analog uses physical media, whereas the Minis yep. use basically ROMs, so to speak. Um, but it's kind of cool. So it looks like they said it will look, uh, it's launching in 2024. So next year, so maybe next year's podcast will be able to actually have images of it and to see what it, what it looks like. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, brother. I know you're an RL Stein fan. So, absolutely. Yeah. uh, this is interesting in an interview of what he said, I'm gonna let you uh, take this because I, I think it brings up something I hadn't really thought of before. So I'll let you take this one. Yeah, uh, R.L. Stein is looking at newer technology and the way that uh, smartphones changes how he writes his horror novels. Um, so in this article, he says he spends a lot of time with every uh, book trying to get rid of phones to make sure they don't interfere. Yep. And it, it, sorry, uh, my computer's going a little slow. Hey, no worries. You, wanna... you just got a new computer. What are you talking about? It can't shouldn't be slow. I know, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, no big deal, Doug. The, the, so. The real gist of this article is that he's basically talking about how technology can ruin a story. And I think that's kind of cool. So when he starts a book, he tries to think through all the ways he's going to isolate his characters and get them away from telephones, specifically smartphones, because they're everywhere. And that so it's interesting. It's about when you're a modern day writer and I love writing myself. So this I really like this. You have to think of ways of, well, how are you going to write around technology so that it doesn't screw up your plot? <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. essentially it. So it's kind of, it was an interesting little call out. Appreciate you picking that up for me. Yeah, hey, no I've worries. got the full article now. I'd say technology and stuff definitely has changed the minds of writers. You know, uh, books, I love audiobooks. So trying to put that phone down, I can't put it down on an audiobook. But going to like paper and enjoying it and grossing yourself in the story is great. Yeah. And a little bit later on our main topic, we're going to be talking about uh, 
uh, scary movies. And we're going to be talking about scary shows, scary games. Uh, it is interesting because if you look like the old school, you know, thrashers, you know, like, you know, the Jasons, the Friday the 13th and all that. I mean, I guess you could argue that they're in the woods, so the cell phones wouldn't work, but it's about setting, right? Because somebody's chasing you, just pick up, call, call somebody for help. <laughs> well, now, not to make a joke of it, but uh, if Jason is chasing you, you look at your Apple Watch and you hit your emergency contact. That's and right. And the if, caravan well, shows up. and They also have satellite capability yeah. now. So yeah, the they're, they're going to so. have to write right into the movies where you lose your Apple Watch. <laughs> So do the yeah, because the younger games. generations can be like, well, if I had my phone. <laughs> yeah, so. I know. All right. Oh, this next one's interesting. I'm going to let you take this one if you're able to get your computer f- to cooperate with you. You've been yeah, having some issues you know, lately. this slow computer, I tell you. It's not <laughs> Need a new one. Got to tell your wife. Got to get a new one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I do have a comfy couch because if I tell her that, it's on the couch for me. <laughs> I bet so. So uh, back to the story, Uh, this is really exciting for me, and this is just the tip of the spear, but a college in Nebraska, I believe University of Nebraska-Lincoln, has used AI, and like we said, what is one of our shows without mentioning AI, so I'm glad you threw us in here, but they are using AI to read scrolls that were illegible for the last 2,000 years. Yeah. And I'd say the amount of information, the amount of historical data we can pull off these will be amazing. Yep. Because I would see in the future that you have your AI, you program the ancient language, and it will be able to uh, kind of Google Translate, for a mm-hmm. matter of words, exactly what's written on the scrolls. Yep, to decipher it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's so really uh, exciting stuff. It's tied to a competition, I think, within academia. Uh, it's called the Vesuvius Challenge. Now, it's interesting. Uh, I was able to visit Pompeii when I had gone to Italy, and oh, cool. if you're unfamiliar with Pompeii, it was a very advanced uh, city that was at the uh, base of Mount Vesuvius, but it erupted and um, just basically wiped it out completely. Well, they do have artifacts and. Uh, it was always thought that there's no way we'll ever be able to decipher what any of this really was. But like you said, using optical characterizations, um, they were able to you know, really just kind of look at it and have it be analyzed by the AI. And, and it was funny. It's not like it didn't reveal anything fancy. It basically revealed the word purple, which they think <laughs> is referring to instructions for dying because purple is considered a color of royalty and was uh, uh, highly highly praised so the word was uh porphyros in the greek word for purple is really what what translated but they they won money for the competition so but it does enter in a, a new way of using ai so that's kind of cool so since this is a scary halloween episode and you can cut this out if you want <laughs> but i'm thinking no, i'm uh, leaving it in better be good <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking with this ai technology putting on my tinfoil hat Uh-oh. if we have some scrolls talking about atlantis or who actually built the pyramids? Conspiracy theory. But you know what? That'd be a good story. Kind of goes back into that writing thing with R.L. Stein. Yeah. So I, you know what? I may let me write that down. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. Okay. Ten hat off. No. We'll get to our uh, main topic. I'm going to add it into my my notes of possible stories. I like it. It's a, it's a good. Cool. It's a good awesome. one. Yeah. So that does it for the nerd news. We will get into our main topic now. And let me go ahead and get the share open. So the biggest thing is we were kind of kicking back and forth just exactly. What would be, you know, good for this time of year? And, you know, right out the gate, we decided that, hey, let's go ahead and um, talk through what are some of our recommendations of movies, games, or TV shows that are more spooky. Now, I have a disclaimer, yeah. like, right out the gate. I mentioned just a moment ago uh, the Thrasher films and things like that. I'm just not a big, like, you know guts and gore kind of guy they just i've seen almost every single one of them friday the 13th nightmare on elm street uh halloween you know all of those i've seen them they're just not they're not my jam for me i think i need something and it's funny because the first one you see on the screen here is not sophisticated but i think i need something with a with a better story uh and so i'm more into like thrillers that kind of like give you the creeps uh but uh has more of a story versus just you know 
teenagers in the woods that get chopped up for no reason. Uh, so that's that's my disclaimer. Uh, but I also like stupid things like f- comedies, and that's where some of mine are in here. Uh, so the first one, and my wife actually discovered this movie. She had watched it late one night on accident, and then she made me watch it the next day, and I'm glad she did. It's called uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Have you seen this movie? Excellent. I mean, just a fine piece of cinema there. <laughs> Chef kiss. Well, the thing is, I yeah. I skipped it when it was in the theater. The way they marketed it as if it was a thrasher, blood and gore, scary movie. If you watch this movie, it is a full on comedy. It's one of the funniest things I have ever seen. And yeah. it kind of makes fun of the thrashers. And I think maybe that's why I liked it. So. Definitely. And I uh, will kind of point you towards your next one on the list, uh, Cabin in the Woods, because it kind of has the same feel of yep. it's not exactly serious, but you think going into the movie. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll let you explain it, but I love Cabin in the Woods yeah. just because it kind of goes outside of the norm of a horror or suspense or thrasher movie. Yeah. And we don't want to spoil anything. We're trying to make this non-spoiler. Yep. So I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, this movie is very similar to the prior one in that. I did go see this one in the theater, um, but when we went, we thought it was going to be full on scary. It is not. It is hilarious. It's a great movie. It's also in the same vein as uh, as the one that you saw before. So I don't want to ruin it, but just when you walk into it, it it presents. It's kind of like Dale and Tucker. It presents itself as being something that it's not. And that is such a it, it messes with your mind. And it's so funny on top of it. So. I don't know. I love these movies. They're my definitely. That's why I had to put them at the at the top of my list. Um, yeah, I think the uh, just to do that real quick. The funniest yeah, thing ahead. from Cabin in the Woods is uh, just the merman gets him in the end. I'll just say that. Yeah, you, you'll all see that. You'll see that. Okay. Or placing bets on the end of the world. Yeah. Just we'll, we'll, you'll see it if you try catch not these to movies. spoil it too much. Yeah, but yeah. We won't tell you why, but it's it's awesome. Uh, so continuing down the thriller route, I love Jordan Peele. Now, if you don't know yes. who he is, uh, he was, he's a comedian that did, um, uh, the Jordan, uh, it was Peele, uh, Key and Peele. Key and Peele thank you. Yep. And it was him and his, uh, you know, comedy partner. And they always just had funny sketches of comedy. They were, and they're all amazing. They're so good. Uh, kind of like in the vein of like, Dave Chappelle a little bit, but maybe not as crash at times, but they had some of them that were, but he branched off, became a writer and director. And he started with get out. Then he did us. And then he did. Nope. These movies are incredible. They are just perfectly written and delivered and, and, and done like, Oh my God, love these movies. Anything he does hands down. I love, and I know you, you love him too, as well. You've seen these and, you're a big fan of them as well. Yeah. The first one for those looking, we have get out. Nope. And the movie us. So get out. Nope. And us three different movies. The first one he started was get out. You know, this was such a kind of different direction. Lots of twists, lots of turns. And then he just kept hitting other hits. Now us, if you all haven't seen it, no spoilers. You need to check it out. That is the craziest. (laughs) It is messed up. Yep. And then nope, uh, it's got a little comedy in it. And then of course it's crazy too. Full hat, aliens. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Not to give it away. If but you well, but it doesn't alert. give anything away because if you watch the trailer, you, you can tell that, that one's about aliens, right? Yeah. So you're not giving anything away uh, on that one. But it's so good. It's so good. It's the He's way doing he a great it. job. You know, it's kind of like uh and I'll talk about this later. M. Night Shyamalan. Oh yep. Hit after hit after hit. And I think uh Jordan Peele's on the same track not to put him in the same category as Shyamalan but the hits are coming out and they're doing great yeah and the thing with Shyamalan he got a lot of heat because he had a formula kind of like Hitchcock and he was just hitting them one after the other and then he deviated which I don't blame him because he wanted to try something and then people got mad at him for like I think one of his first ones was like the village that wasn't a paranormal movie and people were mad at him for it because most of his stuff up to that point was paranormal and uh, I loved it. I thought it was amazing, but mm-hmm. people yeah. really criticized him. And then he kind of, he went a different path. He went away from his formula, which honestly is fine. What's different about Jordan Peele is he does kind of have a formula like Shyamalan, but the way he does his formula is so different. You know, I mean, he, he doesn't, he doesn't stick to a mold. Shyamalan was pretty straightforward where there's always a twist, you know, where 
the way he does it is just, I don't know, it's masterful. Perfect writing. So uh, I got to call it out, man. I love Quiet Place. Now, this, most people don't know, yes. it's written and directed by John, John Kravinsky, uh, who is in The Office. He plays Jim. Uh, now, John Kravinsky is actually not an actor by first trade. He is a writer. He went to school for creative writing. He wanted to be a writer. Uh, he, there's videos if you go out and look on how he got into the office. Uh, he went to the audition, just happened to get it, but it wasn't his mainline thing. So this is his uh, striking out for writing and even directing. And he's, of course, married to the main actress, Emily Blunt, who's amazing and everything as well. These yeah. movies are also impeccable in my, in my opinion. Have you seen these? Yes, both of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Great movies. You know, it's such a, and I'm using this word a lot today because we have a really good list, but such a different path of a horror movie. Uh, really good. You kind of, there's some sad moments in there. Mm -hmm. Some main characters, mm -hmm. not to give spoilers away, uh, come and go and, but that makes it a better movie, in my opinion. Yeah. Kind of the analogy of Game of Thrones. If you're an A-list star, it doesn't matter. You're gone. Yeah. So. It's so good. And the biggest thing is uh, their use of sound or the lack thereof. That's what's trippy about this is that, and we won't spoil why, but it uses silence in a scary, scary, scary way. Yeah. All right. M night. Now I know we may have some duplicates because this one's my list. So we, you'll see, mm -hmm. we'll see this again and you can elaborate on your thing. Um, this was, I think the, f one of the first, no, the first one may have been unbreakable. I don't know which one came out first. Yeah. I'll look that up while we're talking. Please do. Six cents though, was really the breakout hit for M night Shyamalan. Um, it's a really good movie has such a great tone about it. And of course there's a twist in it. Uh, I highly, highly recommend it. Were you able to see which one was first? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the first one, if I got it, is uh, Wide Awake, which I don't know if I've that seen this one. On my list. I don't know if I've seen that one. So, not as first uh, one. It came out in 98, uh, okay. Six Sense 99, then Unbreakable, and it, got the it. hits keep coming. Definitely. I would dare say that uh, Six Sense, though, is definitely his breakout hit, though. Yes, big yeah. time. Yeah, the Wide Awake, I'm reading it. I don't think I've ever yeah, seen it. But. I don't think I have either. Now, love me some M. Night. He also did Signs. Oh yeah. my God. Such a great movie. And I, I, I like Mel Gibson's set aside. A lot of people have opinions about him as a person. Uh, Political but, and all that. Yeah. But dude, his movie, his acting is so good. He's Brave a great Heart. actor. Oh yeah. yeah. Lethal Weapon. Uh, this also has Joaquin Phoenix in it. The Joker is he, you know, so mm -hmm. the acting, this is so good. It has one of the Macaulay Culkin uh, kids. It's not Macaulay. It's his, um, uh, his kid brother. I can't remember. Is it Kieran? I can't remember. Is it what, Kieran? I think so. He's great in yeah. it. It's just, yeah. it, it's got the girl from Little Miss Sunshine. Can't remember her name as well. I just, great movie, great cast, awesomely mm -hmm. done. Love this movie. One of my favorites. Yeah. And as far as a scary creep factor, it had uh, some, it's not spoiler some alert, this movie's <laughs> almost 20 years old. It had jump scares. Yeah. Yeah. Had some uh, actual alien footage mm -hmm. in there. And yeah. But it, the way M. Night Shyamalan presents it to you, it's so like, good. oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and I, I'm looking at your list here. I don't see any more Shyamalan movies. So mm -hmm. a pro tip out there for most of his movies, if you see something in red, that is a big clue. So mm -hmm. uh, just if you go back and watch these this weekend or this month, uh, Sixth Sense, there's a red doorknob you need to pay attention mm -hmm. to. Uh, the Village, which I'll talk about, has mm -hmm. red flowers and plants and stuff. and then. Signs, I don't know exactly, but I believe there's some red stuff in there. So. I'm sure it's buried in there. And he also makes a an appearance in all his movies, which Hitchcock yes. did as well. Yeah. Uh, he's somewhere in the movie, whether you can spot him or not. It's kind of fun to be able to spot him, you know. So mm -hmm. it's kind of neat. Well, but, it wouldn't be. I said, I know that's why you're wearing a shirt. I love Ghostbusters. And I'm so excited because we yeah. have a new Ghostbusters. The continuation of Afterlife is is coming. Uh, the, I love the new ones, which is done by Jason Reitman, uh, which mm -hmm. he took over for his father. Um, and I just think they're so good. And I know the, they did the funny one with Melissa McCarthy and it got a lot of static because they were females. I could care less that they were all females. I thought it was good. I actually yeah. liked it, but I'm so in love with Ghostbusters that you could, you know, give me anything. Um, 
it was funny. And no, it's not in the same vein of being serious. I like the serious ones a little better, but it had nothing to do with them being an all female cast. I, I, yeah, that, I, I had no problems with that. No. Nope. And it was all right that it was funny, you know? I mean, so it's fine, but I do like the more serious ones better. I will say that, but it's because they're serious. It has nothing to do with, you know, gender by any means. So. Oh, I agree completely. I mean, uh, everybody's worried about female cast. That didn't bother me at all. It's a good story. The it's a good seriousness. Story. Matter. Uh, yeah. But the first uh, Afterlife, uh, it's like we get back to that true, uh-huh. gritty, yep. like 80s Ghostbusters, and that was amazing. Yep. And tying it back into the original team. And I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm looking so forward to it. Love it. Loved everything they did. So it's so good. Especially with like uh, Harold Ramis and him as an actor, he passed away. And the way they handled that was just beautiful. Definitely watch this movie. I mean, in fact, oh, I may nice. just watch it again because I love it so much this season. Yep. Before I watch the next one that's coming out very soon. <clears throat> so I'm getting my TV show. Now, I will definitely say this. The Walking Dead. Loved yep. this. Now, I loved the comics before I loved you know, this. My wife had actually bought me the big bounded release of the comics. Um, with episode like with season one and two and even a three, it followed it pretty closely. Uh, but I will admit this show goes on a little too long. Meaning now I haven't even finished it yet because yeah. I stopped. There's so many. It's kind of like lost. They kind of got <laughs> they got lost. And it's oh, a cash don't cow. Don't talk to me about lost. Yeah. yeah. Now I, they have a spinoff of um, like where they're in New York City, certain characters, and then there's one that's specific mm-hmm. to Daryl Dixon. I've heard the spinoffs, the recent spinoff, get back to the original like feeling of the first ones. So I want to, I need to finish it so that I can get into those. Um, so I, but I love this universe, but I was a, I was a comic book lover of it first. I fell in love with the comics originally. Uh, so that's my thing. I don't know. You, you watched, the, have you watched any of these? I did. You know, I was so in tune to uh, walking dead. That's the first time I actually watched the companion show afterwards that explains the ins and outs and yep. more detail. Like fear the walking I dead. Agree. I agree. It went it. on forever and ever. Yep. And uh, there's some truly heartbreaking moments in there, you know, when Negan's group first meets everybody and <sighs> brutal, they kill off a lot of characters, but yeah. that's what makes a good story, you know, heartbreaking. So, yep, it's amazing. I love me some Stranger Things. Everybody knows Stranger oh, Things, cool. right? I mean, uh, I think the final one will be coming out most likely probably at the summertime. They're all really old now, they all, they're all adults. Uh, so, uh, it'll be yeah. interesting to do, but I, these are just impeccable writing the the i think they're called the duffer brothers that wrote it and directed it just beautiful it's like a love letter to goonies mixed with et mixed with i, I just it's a perfect mashup so yeah. just and it's in the 80s it's so good oh, love yeah. these shows well and i think that's the biggest appeal is just the uh the here's our childhood here's what we love you know D arcade the nostalgia uh, yeah uh, oh man it, the that's music what dr- Oh, oh yes. God. yes, the soundtrack. Yeah. And it's funny Spotify, because Spotify, if you look Things at playlist, yeah. well, and it, they also have like the theme song is like synth wave, which I love synth wave music anyway. Like I'll listen to that when I'm working, but yeah. what's cool about it is that you can see with season two and then three as it, their budget gets bigger because the songs get, you know, the royalties they're paying for the songs that are, you know, popular mm-hmm. songs. <laughs> so th- it just gets better and better and better. Yeah, and the season four, I believe, that uh, Kate Bush song, Stranger, you know, it's an old song, but most of us haven't heard it. I think it went, I read the stories, like, all the way to the very top. She made tons tons of of downloads, tons of plays on YouTube. Yeah. Great. Yep. Yep. She wouldn't uh, sell the rights. They had to really convince her to do it, because she didn't do it, but she made bank on it. It She was smart to hold out. I hadn't, I wasn't familiar with the song. Until the I show, to be either. honest with you, because it was really song. it was big in the UK. I mean, that's he was a yeah. UK artist, so that's probably why. But it's cool. I love it. Ah, oh, dude, I love me some Squid Games. If you haven't seen this, yeah. it's so it's not like scary. It's just so many times I had my hand. I, yeah, I had my a hand in my around mouth. Uh, every corner. Yeah, yeah, I had just I was in shock. I had my hand over my mouth, yeah. just like what's going to happen. So I love Squid Games. I love what's coming out of Korea with their cinema. Like, mm-hmm. there's a movie called Parasite. I didn't put it on her. Almost did. That's in the same vein of, it's not the same story type, but the suspense part of it. And it's also based out of South Korea. This is also South Korea. Just, they are doing some really cool things in South Korea and their cinema and Squid. Now there is a continuation of Squid Games. I don't know if people know that Squid Games 2 is coming, uh, but definitely worth a watch this season. Um, I'll pick up the pace because we've got yours to get to see. There's so much here. Uh, yeah. uh, the, these are just absolutely 
wonderful movies. I know my daughter loves them as well. Um, uh, Flanagan is the person who's the writer and director of this, and he he's known for um, doing really good stuff. Uh, Haunting of Hill House, The Haunting of Bly Manor, these are Netflix series, and Midnight Mass. Um, they now just released Fall, The House of Usher. Haven't watched it yet. Um, but my fa- personal favorite was Midnight Mass. Mm-hmm. So good. So good. Uh, but that doesn't mean the others are not. They are just, all of them are impeccable. They're so good. H- have you caught any of these at all? I have not. Uh, but I've noticed these after binge watching Fall of the House of Usher. Yep. Amazing. I oh, thought. you're going to love them. You're going to love them. Yep. So I uh, have watched uh, Fall of the House of Usher this week. I binged it just because I couldn't put it down like a good book. Yep. So I'm going to go back definitely and check these out. Dude, I, I'm, I want you to report back to me which ones, which ones of these are your favorite. Between me and my kids, we each one have a different favorite. Yep. Um, so, and they're not like full-blown scary, scary, scary. They're just thrillers. They're, I don't know, just wonderful acting, wonderful everything. Video games. Now, hey. I, I, I have to admit, I've not played this myself, but I've watched people play it. Alien Isolation. Uh, it started with VR, and you can play it now without VR, I think. And I do have it in my Steam library. I just haven't played it yet. But basically, you're on a ship and you're hiding from it. You don't have a gun, right? Uh, but you're hiding from the alien. Have you played this? No, but I have watched some of the YouTube videos. Oh and my God, they're hilarious. When it kind of switches away from the streamer view of the guy playing to the video, mm-hmm. well, I get jump scares too. I oh, mean, yeah. it is an intense game. Yeah. You turn a corner, boom, there it is. It's. It's yeah. so it's like hide and seek with an alien. So yeah. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Resident Evil. Uh, I've not Absolutely. played all of them. I've not played the I've been like, what is the last one was uh, Village is on my list. I haven't even played that one. Um, I haven't played Biohazard. There's so many of them I haven't played. I need to. But I love you talking about the PlayStation. Like I remember mm-hmm. playing Resident Evil the first time. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. I love two. Yeah. Uh, personally, Resident Evil 2 was probably my favorite. Uh, but my brother will kick me for this. His favorite, I believe, is four. Um, and they just remastered it. I've still not played it. So I, I've got, just like I told you, you've got to play catch up on some games. I need to yeah. go back and play some of these. How, how far did you get on these? How many have you done? Uh, I've done one and two, definitely. And that's kind of where I stopped there. Same, Same for know, me. I switched over to Xbox, which mm-hmm. they still had some resident evil stuff well i played five on xbox 360 and it was horrible mm-hmm. like now they f- i heard they went back and fixed it but like the controls were horrible it was just yeah i didn't i wasn't a fan oh, yeah of two it. is where i really stopped because i played it all the way through it's great mm-hmm. uh, there's a i think if you do uh imports uh biohazard is what they call it in japan and southeast yeah, asia they have it on the list same here. Yeah. same game oh yeah yep. and they released it here in the u.s i do i'm mm-hmm. familiar with that one because it's like the graphics were really good, and it's like a creepy yep. family or something. I don't know the deep, but this was <laughs> scary as all get out. And to tie into that real quick, I know we got to keep moving, but the Resident Evil movies, some people are like, eh, whatever, I like but em. I thought it was, I thought it was really good. Yeah. I'm glad you called that out. I forgot about the movies. I could have put that and on I here. And I think it's her name, uh, I'm looking it up, Mila Jovich. You got it. She was also in um, The Fifth Element. And yes. uh, yeah, she's really good. We we started to watch them as a family because I've never seen all of them and they're really good. Some of them are kind of funny. They're kind of cheesy, but they're good. They're more action movies. Uh, This one is an interesting one. It's called until dawn. There's another one called the query. It's all motion capture actors and it's choose your own adventures. It's only on PlayStation. Uh, Maybe on PC. I think it's on PC as well. Maybe Uh, they're so good. But basically it's typical thrasher type movie, kids in a cabin, teenagers and then lights go out and then i'm gonna i'm gonna break away from the group and you get to decide whether or not you want to break away you got to hide you got to make snap decisions and the goal is to save as many teenagers as possible so uh but it's it's really good it's choose your own adventure but the graphics are excellent because it's all motion capture highly recommend this one last of us i threw it in there doug because it is so good it's uh it's a great story but it's got that intense thriller feel to it too and zombie-esque stuff too and this and the video games is what i'm recommending here show is also equally good so yep i love the show uh the pc game had a couple bugs and stuff it is on my steam list but i was kind of just waiting for the most stable version to come yeah. out before i started i think they're getting there though but the show was amazing i thought oh yeah highly yeah. recommend it uh now this is honorable mention because to me i first read the book world war z the yep. book is so good. Start I've with the book if you can. Well. Oh my God. There's yeah. Basically, it's a series of short stories after zombies 
So they got it all taken care of and it's people. It's so good. Like you'll laugh, you'll cry. You'll you'd mm-hmm. like the book is scary even at times too. the movie with Brad Pitt. I love the movie with Brad Pitt, but it's nothing like the book. It's still great. But then the video game you and I've played like this, like yes. it's so good. So you get, intense. Oh my God. You get jumped. You and I had moments where we would like scream at each other. Uh, you come yeah. around. And go, oh my God. We had to get back. Look to playing behind this. you. Look behind. Oh yeah. my God. It's yeah. such a great game. It's so good. So I had to mention it. And uh, if, this is a whole nother episode, but zombie rules. So there's <laughs> walkers and everything. Uh, these are sprinters. These are like, oh yeah. Usain Bolt was a zombie. That's yeah. what these are. It's like 28 days later. You know what? We're going to add it to this. We're going to have a zombie. Uh, we're going to have different zombie type uh, main episode where we talk we're about We're going to break ones. down the rules, go yep. back to Romero, and start That's right. from the beginning. Get into yeah. zombie land, the rules, you know, double tap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, I'm going to stop on that one, and then we're going to shift gears to your list. Sorry, mine was so long. It was so good. There's just so many good ones, you know? No, you're good. No, I've got some uh, older ones that really... Uh, kind of defined my childhood no that's not the right word but kind of scared the crud out of me when i was a little kid because my brother would do that to me so and there'll be some duplicates we talked about that um so so we've got uh, the sixth sense up right now uh talked about that that's m night Shyamalan. great show whoops there we go i've not seen Uh, this 1408 have you not seen this no Oh, I don't my think gosh. I have. You need to check this out this weekend. All right. I'll so 1408 is about a haunted hotel room or something's going on. Mm-hmm. John Cusack is a, I believe, paranormal investigator. Um, I could have that wrong. This is written by Stephen uh, King? Mm-hmm. It is it a really good movie. Oh, then I got to watch. I love Stephen King stuff. So like, just imagine yeah. a normal working hotel, uh-huh. but everything's happening in one room. Very it's cool. It's crazy. Dude, yeah. uh, well, you had me at Stephen. You definitely got to check this out. On the poster here, it says, based on a terabyte store by Stephen King. I got to watch it because I love his stuff. Yeah. He does so good. Uh, Silent uh, Hill. Oh, good. Yep, Silent Hill. Both the, uh, it started out as a video game. Super scary. My brother would play it. I would watch. So scary. And I would kind of be doing the hiding behind a pillow because the <laughs> jump scares and the creepiness and that. And uh, the poster, if you're watching on YouTube, Spotify, this is the poster from the movie. Mm-hmm. I've but not the seen movie the movie. Is even more terrifying. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Well, the game was terrifying. I remember it. It was like I never played all the way through. It was just. It was so much scary. I remember. I think I rented it for the PlayStation, yep. and I thought it was going to be like Resident Evil, which Resident Evil had some pops and stuff in it, but no, it's way yeah, scary. It's got a creep <laughs> factor to it. <laughs> yes, it does. So this is an interesting one. And uh, back when I was probably middle school, my brother cousins were in high school the hype behind Blair Witch Project and that's what I'm talking about here is that they did such a great marketing campaign that they made people think this was a true story like this is true film and true found footage people yeah and that's what it uh said so here's an article that I found uh, the Blair Witch team planted stories among the public, passed out missing person leaflets, shared photos from police reports, and they even went as far as making fake news stories with small local newspapers. I mean, talk about a marketing campaign. Oh, yeah. uh, so to kind of explain Blair Witch Project, these uh, three kids go out uh, camping, and uh, I'll just kind of leave it at that. I don't want to give too much away, but... Uh, there's some witches and demonic presences and stuff that they encounter in the woods, and it's pretty creepy. Oh yeah, and I remember uh, the, the even just from a cinema. Like I love because I'm a cinephile. Like this movie cost hardly nothing to make, and it made oh. so much money, and it blew up the found yeah. footage thing, like paranormal and all that, which is an interesting thing. But you are right; there was a lot of churn about whether it's real, whether it's not, the way they did it with the marketing. I remember I got sick. I went with a friend of mine at work, and he and I like it was packed. We had no choice. We had to sit on the front yeah. row, dude, all the way home from, yeah. uh, it was like a 30 minute drive home and he drove his truck. I thought I was going to puke and he was sick yeah. too. Like I was just like, but he was better than I was. I thought I was going to puke because all the shaky camera. You know, oh so. yeah. <laughs> well, shout out to our listener, Kevin, for that one. The next yeah, one. That's a good one. Uh, shout out to uh, one of our listeners, Ashley, uh, my wife. I have to call her a <laughs> listener. Yeah. Uh, she <laughs> loves the Halloween series. She just loves those kind of, so she hates 80s movies, but she loves like these slashers and 
That's weird. She has a weird movie uh, genre love. But Halloween, I mean, such a great uh, thing. If you look at the story behind the first Halloween, it's the shadow. It doesn't really name him. Yeah. That's kind of his origin story. Mm-hmm. And then they then they, they came into the Michael Myers thing, which was which is good, mm-hmm. iconic character. Yeah. And the hilarious thing is uh this movie, like they didn't have a mask or something went awry and they had to run the prop department had to go get so they they got a uh James T. Kirk mask, I believe, and then they just spray painted it white. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah, really cool how they made the movies back in the day. Yeah. Not all the uh uh, special effects and stuff. Yeah. John Carpenter is the director. And the cool thing about this is, uh, also there is a called inside the director's chair, um, that Robert Rodriguez does. And he interviews, uh, Car- John Carpenter about this and they talk about the making of it and all the things that they had to do to get it done back then. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So I can't go anywhere without saying the Saw movie, but you talk about kind of 17? gross and how many of them are violent? <laughs> Uh, I have to look. There's there a, are lot. a ton, but the, the first, first Saw movie, yeah. yeah, it's kind of wow. This is really violent. Mm-hmm. This is something Different. we haven't seen before. So yeah, I liked it. Uh, yep, yeah, I believe there is ten of them. Oh God, so many of them. Yep, ten of them. It's Saw uh, all the way to seven. And then, or six, and then does final chapter, then Jigsaw, then Spiral, and then Saw X. They they make money. You know, it's kind of like the oh, Friday yeah, the 13th and all that. They just they keep making money. So, mm-hmm. oh, we just uh, talked about R.L. Stein. Yeah, we'll skip over this, but Goosebumps, so many great stories. R.L. Stein, the books, and then they're made into a series back in the 90s. And they brought it back with Jack Black with a feature movie, and now they brought it back again. Uh, with a series on Disney Plus. Disney what? Plus. Yep. I was yes, about Disney to say Plus. Prime, but Disney Plus. Nope, yep. Disney Plus. I, and I want to see it. It looks good. It's got Justin Long in it. And I know people, yep. some people like him, some people I like him. He was the, he did the commercials with I'm a Mac versus I'm a PC. You remember those? Yeah. He's, oh, yeah. he's that guy. So he was also in, uh, oh, the, the real the one about them uh, creating the school. Oh, well, well, what's well, creating the school? I don't know that one. I, uh, I, let me look this up. It's good. I, I know he was in uh, Galaxy Quest, and mm-hmm. he was also in the Die Hard. That's what I was trying to think of, where they have these hackers that are trying to take over the world. It's so it's a terrible story, <laughs> but yeah. still, it's Die Hard. Though. You got to watch it, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I don't know the one about the school though. Uh, I'm not seeing it. So he uh, creates a college. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. I know what you're talking about. Is it a comedy? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. But anyway, Justin Long yep. is in the new Goosebumps. <laughs> that's, we got down a rabbit hole. Ooh, uh, yeah. I'm getting one. sidetracked a lot. but that's Interesting. Uh, American Psycho. Yeah. Really good. You know, I it's hadn't creepy. watched this until recently. I thought it was part of the Psycho series. You know, the oh, yeah. guy and the mom in the hotel. Yeah. But it's a little different. It is. It's a about a psychopath and uh christian bale mm-hmm. our batman uh he's creepy in this movie it's so and i think that's what's disturbing about it is because there's actual people that are like this that's what makes it scary it's yeah, yeah very scary serial killers another m light Shyamalan uh, reference you had it on your signs great show yep. good a good one the village uh, the village really good the twist in this you know you watch the entire movie and then the last like 10 15 minutes it's like wow like total twist of where they are and what's happening and everything. Yep. It's really good. This is the one I think that people got mad at him, but I loved it. I thought it was an amazing movie. Definitely go watch it. It's so good. Yep. Oh, these are good. Tales from the Crypt. Now we're kind of going into my TV shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that late night, uh, terrible B C list, uh, acting, but Tales from the Crypt, the guy was hilarious. Uh, he would introduce the stories. Mm-hmm. And they were just kind of little sh- shorts every week. Yep. And they were funny. Many of them were just comedy. Yeah. yeah they were, that's mm-hmm. why they were, they were, they were pretty good. And they were a uh, comic book, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. as well. I believe so. Oh, my uh, wife loves it. Continuing X-Files. with the late night TV, uh, X Files. Love mm-hmm. X Files. Now, I am currently watching X Files again, and I've gotten to the point where, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but it's an old show. Mulder gets abducted. And it's not in the show. I hate it. 
Yeah. It, it is not weird. the same without Mulder. Uh, Scully's by herself with a new partner. Yeah. Terrible. My, my wife watched them all through. It took her forever to do it. And mm. uh, yeah, she said the same thing. She may have even skipped over those till he comes back. And Spoiler. I'm about to, you know, I've, I'm at the Mulder's Gone yeah. series and I just, I'm going to have to skip. Yeah. Missed the chemistry. Now I never watched this one, but I heard it was good. Very strange. Uh, kind of like Outer Limits, kind of like Twilight Zone. Mm. It's just some creepy stories. Yeah. Um, I can't remember any specifically, just really creepy like X Files and okay. Twilight Zone and Yeah, I'm very familiar with it, but I've never seen it. So I'll have to check it out. And Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone. Yeah. So if you're watching our video, this is the poster from the new series on Paramount that uh Peel does, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. He does. Yep. I have not had a chance to watch those. I've watched all the originals. I watched the motion picture with uh, I believe Dan Aykroyd is in mm. it. Ah, it's been so, so long i can't remember he may have been yeah they're all really good yeah but so weird so great um the kind of uh alternative to this modern alternative is blacklist or black mirror black mirror sorry oh, yeah. they're so good black mirror on netflix which is really good oh yeah they're awesome oh getting to your video games what's your next one yeah so parasite eve we, we've talked about this before such a great uh playstation one uh, video game. I came out with the second one. I never played it. Were there jump scares Similar? in this one? Yeah. Okay. And I hadn't kinda, played this one as much. Yeah. It's a top-down version, kind of like Final Fantasy, where mm-hmm. you kind of pause everything and have the fight scenes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I hadn't played this one too much, but I've not played this either. Now, What's this is one? a shout out to uh, Matt H, one of our fans. Mm-hmm. I have never played this. He said, this is one of the scariest games he's ever played. I've looked at some trailers. It's creepy. You're like, no thanks. <laughs> There's some scary yeah. games. Uh, mm-hmm. My son plays a game that's, I think he may play this one, but uh, he plays one. There's one where you're in the woods and something's chasing you. I, There's one that's really cool. It's a co-op game where you're basically like paranormal investigators and you have to go into the house and use the little, kind of like what you see on YouTube, but the lights will go on and off and you're all in different parts of the house. And oh my gosh, it's so crazy. Why'd now, you this put this in there? In, How is this scary? Uh, this was sent in by our friend Matt D. Oh, uh, go figure. I know Matt. Yeah. And I thought, <laughs> why did this scare you? So what, it's Wolfenstein for those that are him, listening. I guess. Yeah, Wolfenstein 3D. Like, for those that are yeah. listening, you can't see. Yeah. I keep forgetting to mention it. Yep. So Wolfenstein 3D, it's kind of a on rails, which means you can't really move too much. You can go room to room uh, shooter. One of he the first there was, person shooters ever, yeah. Mm-hmm. He said there was jump scares in there. I'm thinking, I don't remember. Any well, jump scares, but... I will give him this. So first of all, it is a classic. It, I respect it. It's awesome. It It's what led us to Doom that led us to everything. It, it is amazing. But I, I will say there were moments where the doors, you know, when you would open them, they slide open. Behind those doors, sometimes you would, it was a dice roll almost. If you were just going to be a normal Nazi soldier or, or even sometimes like one of those dogs, the dogs always did get me. I will say that because they had these like dogs that would attack and they seemed to come out of nowhere. So I will give him that. There were some some moments of jump. I, I wouldn't call the game inherently scary, but there were jump scares in it for sure. Yeah. I'll give you that, Matt. OK. <laughs> Ooh, uh, good one. Matt also mentioned uh, Diablo 4. Yep. Uh, All the I've Diablos. I've never played honestly. Diablo before, but it does have a very... If you don't know it, it's about Satan and hell and all that stuff. It does have a very scary vibe to it. Great games, all of them, one yep. through four, honestly. They, and they do have a very dark tone to them. Then I wouldn't say not jump scary, except whenever you maybe you have a whole bunch of enemies swarming you. That can be kind of, but that's more panic. You're yeah. trying to survive more than anything. Oh, so. yeah. But yeah, I think that does it for our list. Yeah. I am sure there are so many things we forgot but we're already at like the, you know, the 53 minute mark here. And so, yeah. uh, you know, it's just, uh, uh, it's one of those things that, that w- you, sometimes we get an idea and we're like, Hey, there's this and there's this and there's this and there's this. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. I get it's... sidetracked a lot when I get excited about these topics. People I'm sure have noticed that. Yeah. So. This was a good topic. And you know, honestly, we could do this again next year and yeah. pick up totally different stuff. You know, sounds great. So I'm sure if anybody else has stuff that they want to add to the list, feel free to send it in the comments on YouTube or on Spotify. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is a fun one. So, uh, yeah. you know, as we're getting closer to Halloween, check out some of these things, get you in kind of in the mood, that sort of thing. It doesn't have to be like full on 
scary, scary. Some of these things are just intense. So I know I'm going to go back on some of the things on your list and I'm going to check some things out for sure. So definitely. All right, brother. Well, that does it for episode number 36. We want to thank everybody for joining us. This is a blast. This is fun. Uh, don't forget about our merch store. Don't forget about our website. Uh, Doug, any parting thoughts to wrap up 36? Yeah. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. We're having a great time. Uh, lots of user comments this time. You know, I kind of threw out a message. Hey, what's your favorite uh, video game movie? So definitely send us comments, send us emails. Uh, we will do shows based on what you guys want to see. And we're having a great time. Yeah, that is that's awesome. And our subscriber base is growing. So keep it up. So we really yep. appreciate Thank that. Thank you very much. So everybody, you take care and have an awesome, awesome week. And we will catch you on episode number 37. Take care. See ya.